Hi, brilliant. Well, I want to connect first of all with what Flora said earlier that like what a year it's been. Um, and I'll try and get some engagement on the chat if that's okay with everybody. Um, but it has been an incredible year and I've done loads of these in uh, these kind of sessions in loads of different sectors from the police, NHS, sport, um, business and of course education as well. And I do say to a lot of people, when you go into an education setting, it is truly incredible what people are doing. And I say that not to give people a nice, warm, fuzzy feeling uh, on a Saturday morning, because it is a Saturday morning and teachers do work incredibly hard. But what people are doing in schools really is absolutely incredible. And if I could describe the last year in a sentence without using really bad language, I would probably describe the last year as every emotion except boredom. I mean, it's like we've had ups, we've had downs, we've had in the middles, but the one thing we haven't had at any point is boredom. We just haven't been bored. We've had loads on our plate and there's been lots going on. But that, of course, is looking in the rear view mirror. Let's now look through the windscreen at the future. Now, one of the things I am, amongst many things, is a leadership geek. I love everything about leadership. I read a lot about leadership. And the one word that I keep seeing coming up, popping up, people have said it even this morning, is that word uncertainty. And I want to talk about the power of that word uncertainty. But before I go any further, let's get on the chat. And when I say the word uncertainty, what's the first thing that pops in your head? The first word, the first thought, get on the chat and share it. When I say uncertainty, what's the first thing that pops in your head? Off you go. Could do with some elevator music, I suppose, at this point. What's the first thing that pops in your head when you hear the word uncertainty? Opportunity, worry, fear, stress from Emma. Thanks, Emma. Risk, chances, worry, insecurity. Diana, thank you. What else have we got coming through? Anxiety. Brilliant. Thanks, Jamie. New opportunities. Thanks, Olive. So we've got a range of different things that people are coming up there. Thanks, Tom, with fear, change. And what I want to say is that whenever I ask this question, the vast majority of comments you can see coming through there are negative. And I just want to pause on that point because I think it's so damn important. You know, when you're looking at words like frustration, fear, anxiety, I reckon 90% of people, when you talk about uncertainty, people think negatively. And that's for us. And that's for our kids. That's for our staff. That's for us as leaders leading our staff. That's for us as people. That's for us as human beings at home. You know, the one thing we can be certain about is uncertainty, you know, because that's what we're facing at the moment. And I have a worry that I'm going to share with you. It's not part of this session, but I think a lot of people are going, let's get to the end of 2020. We're going to get into 2021. The vaccine's here. Life's going to be all right. Well, I don't think it is going to be all right. I don't think it's going to be much different at the start of 2021 than it's been in 2020. We're still going to be facing a lot of uncertainty. I mean, the way the vaccine's being rolled out, whether you agree with it or not, taking the vaccine... I can't see me having the vaccine at the age of 43 till about 2025, the way it's being rolled out. So we've got all this uncertainty going on. And the first human response, as we've seen there, is quite negative. Now I want to talk to you about three uncertainty dynamics that I've observed, you will definitely observed, we've even mentioned in there, and I've read an awful lot about this term uncertainty. The first uncertainty dynamic I want to talk about is the word that's been mentioned by two people on the chat, which is the word worry. I don't think anybody during this year has not had a worry at some point. And worry, the word worry, which I was fascinated by this, comes from the Greek word, which means divided mind. Isn't that brilliant? Because that's what worry does. It divides your mind. You're thinking here, but then you're also thinking over there. You can't quite focus because you're worried. But as we know, Worry, as the famous old adage goes, worry is a bit like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it don't get you very far. And we are worried at the moment. It divides our mind, but it's not overly productive. Now, whilst we know that, it's a lot easier to say that than do things about it. But what is it we're worried about? Well, I believe strongly that we very often worry about what we might lose. Lose our health. Lose what we've built up in our schools lose some of the kids, lose some of the learning. We're worried about the loss. And as we know from psychology, a loss 
has a much bigger impact on us than a gain has. You know, that's why like, you know, when you lose 20 quid and you spend a ridiculous amount of time rooting around the house, trying to find that 20 quid. We've all done that. But of course, when you find 20 quid, you just go, oh, I've just got 20 quid and you just move on with your life. So we're worried. Number one, we're worried about what we might lose. Uncertainty dynamic number two, I think we need to be aware of, is that I do think, again, people have said this a number of times on the chat, we are quite fearful. But what is it we're fearful of? Well, again, a bit like the worry, if you go another layer down the onion skin, I think we are worried, we're fearful about failing. And of course, a lot's been written about that. Some great books, Susan Jeffers' book is always one of my favourites, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. We fear failure we're going to fail in some way. We're not going to be able to run our schools or we're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to fail in some way in our lives. And a lot of psychologists will say, actually, worry not dealt with will lead to the fear. But if we are fearful about the failure, is that the end of the line? Well, I don't think it is. So I have talked about the fear of failure for a number of years. And then earlier this year, I had one of those moments when I was listening to a podcast that really flipped my thinking. And it was this. It was by a guy called Seth Godin. I love Seth Godin, leadership expert, marketing guru. And he says, it's not, it's not the fear of failure. We don't fear failing because as human beings, we know we're going to fail. But what he does say is, it's not the fear of failure. It's the fear of the criticism that's connected to the failure. I just love that. I just thought, wow, that is just fantastic because it probably is the criticism of the failure that we fear more than the actual failure itself. So again, uncertainty, initial human response, negative. We're worried, worried about what we might lose. We're fearful of failure or more accurately, probably the criticism that's connected to the failure. And the final dynamic, the third and final dynamic I want to talk about is everybody this year, both personally and professionally, has fell outside of their comfort zone. Nobody I've come across this year has said, you know what, Drew, this year's just carried on as normal, like nothing's changed. It's just been tickety-boo, I've rocketed along, and life's good. No one said that at any point in 2020, because it just simply wouldn't be true. Everybody's felt out of the comfort zone. So that's the position that we're in at the moment, I think, when we look at this word uncertainty. The world is uncertain. The first human response is negative. Then when we look at aspects like worry, worried about losing things, fear of failure or criticism, and we're all feeling out of our comfort zone. Now you might be looking at me thinking, Drew, it's Saturday morning. We're all knackered. It's been a long year. This is called Burn Brighter. It's about bringing hope. And to be quite honest, you've been nothing short of depressing during this session this morning. However, I do want to try and flip the thinking because like most things in life, there is another side to this. And I'm going to start with, with my first of three uncertainty statements. So the first statement I want to make is that uncertainty is where innovation lives. So let that sink in for a second. Uncertainty is where innovation lives. We've heard Bill this morning. We've heard Andy that are saying, let's change things up. And of course, when we're forced into it, we can really innovate. But in an uncertain world, isn't it our time, point one? But point two, when we do real innovations, Flora again this morning, as I've been making hundreds of notes, she talked about reimagining. You know, when you reimagine something, it can't be certain. It can't be certain. It has to come from a place of uncertainty. You don't quite know if it's going to work, but hell, let's try anyway, because it's so important. Because as Andy said, why are we doing this? This is about kids. Always has been, always will be. So let's just do it. Let's, let's really see this time of uncertainty as a time where we can innovate. And I think that's powerful. And I'm going to quote Seth Godin again, because I just love this quote. And it's not a, a short quote, but I have learned it. So here it goes. You can't become remarkable by following someone else's remarkable because that thing has already been taken. Therefore, it's no longer remarkable. Now, that in itself is great. You know, if we're going to do something, if we're going to shift things up, if we're going to, as Steve Jobs said, make it a dent in the universe, 
then we're going to have to innovate and do things differently. And in a period of uncertainty, it is the time. And actually, any great innovation, look at Steve Jobs to mention him again. When he was at Apple, imagine his, the conversation at senior level when they were talking about bringing the iPod in. They'd have all looked at him and said, Steve, we're a computer company. And, and Dell tried that MP3 player down the road in, in Silicon Valley, and it didn't work. And he said, why didn't it work? And then I said to him, well, well, because no one can be bothered getting the CDs, downloading them and putting them on an MP3 player. It's like too much work. And he said, don't worry. I've thought about that. In that uncertainty, we're going to innovate again and create this thing called iTunes. Then they did the iPhone. Then they did the iPad. Uncertainty is a time where we can innovate. Uncertainty statement number two. Uncertainty is where we learn and grow. Again, just let that one sink in. Isn't it in uncertainty where we really get those jumps and we learn and we grow and we get bigger and better and we go towards our potential? Isn't that the case? I think it is. Isn't that what happens in schools with kids? We put them in that position of uncertainty and ask them to learn and grow. Isn't this a time when we can do the same? I'm going to use Roger Bannister as a great example here. Does anybody, just quickly on the chat, we'll have a quick drink. Anybody know who Roger Bannister was? Anybody know? <clears throat> Roger Bannister? He's a runner. He was a runner. He was the first guy that ran the four-minute mile. Now, when he ran that four-minute mile, this was post-war. And it was Laura McInerney who was fortunate enough to write the book with uh, The Leadership Factor. She really researched this story. And it's a great story because after the war, when people were on rations and people didn't have um, great training facilities, no one thought it was physiologically, biologically or psychologically possible to run a four minute mile. But he believed it. And in that place of uncertainty, he learned and he grew and he ended up doing that four minute mile. This is a time when we're going to learn more about ourselves, more about our people than ever before. And we can just get better. And we will get better because that's what people do in education. In terms of adapting, shifting, bobbing and weaving, we're the people that do it. A hundred percent. But that's not the end of the story because the moment Roger Bannister did that four minute mile, within three weeks of him doing it, another five, four or five people did it too. Because that thing, again, was certain. Therefore, the learning and growing continued. And that's what we see in life. So uncertainty is where innovation lives. Uncertainty is where we learn and grow. And the third statement I want to make as I look to close is this. Uncertainty is the time, and I really mean the time, when we can have the exhilaration in our lives. Now, when I say that, people will probably want to reach through the screen and throttle me for maybe a number of reasons. But this is an exhilarating time. Now, when I say that, some people pause and go through again. I could describe this year in many ways, but exhilarating is not one of the terms I would possibly use. But it is if we think about why on earth people do adventure travel. I mean, I know people say statistically it's uncertain, but why are you tie an elastic band around your ankle and jump off something we have no right jumping off? I just don't get. But people do that thing. It's that level of uncertainty that makes it exciting and exhilarating. You know, the, the sector I know best, probably, even more than education, is elite sport. And I can tell you now that elite level athletes, they don't want to play in the games where they're beating people and it's like, you know, they're smashing a team off the park. Elite level athletes want to play in the big occasion where they don't know who's going to win. It's incredibly uncertain, but that's where they want to test themselves because it's exciting, because it's edgy, because it's what human beings actually do get excited and do find extremely exhilarating. So to very quickly wrap up before I go to any questions people have got, we are living in an uncertain world and it ain't going to get any better at the beginning of 2021. And as, and as leaders and as teachers, this is something we've really got to consider. You know, how we finish this year is important because of the recency effect. People will remember first what they learned last. So people are going to be, I think, a bit of a slow start in 2021. People do feel uncertain. And that actually the first human response is negative. People will worry about the loss. People will be fearful of the failure or the criticism. And people are feeling out of the comfort zone. And they still will next year. 
But here's the great thing. We can flip that thinking and say these three things. Uncertainty is where innovation lives. This is the time to do the Andy stuff that you mentioned this morning, to do the Bill stuff. Let's innovate. Let's do something incredible. Why not? Why not us? Number two, uncertainty. Uncertainty is that place where we learn and grow and we learn and grow towards our potential. Think Roger Bannister. This is a time when we will learn about ourselves and we will grow. I'm convinced that that is going to happen. If you look at the way people have handled COVID, they've set up local radio stations. People have been doing shopping for the next door neighbours that they didn't even know previously. There's been so many examples of positive human spirit that I find particularly encouraging and inspiring. And the third thing is, uncertainty is that exhilarating place and we actually like it probably more than we think you know no one knows what's around the corner nobody quite knows what's going to happen next but what i do now and i'm really passionate about is this thing uncertainty can be used as a positive and i am so hopeful i've got three lads who are all in the education system and i love what their schools are doing and i know their staff of flipping that thinking and then making it a positive. I mean, look at us here on a Saturday morning, by and large, the tech's working, and mainly that was me, by the way, user error, not um, anything to do with anybody else. But here we are on a Saturday morning, we can do this. We can do this and sit in our homes and then go and spend time with our, but we can share this time together. I've learned a lot already. I know this session has given people some pause for thought as well.